regulatory and technical compliance. Can outsourcing play a role in optimizing compliance processes? Moderated by Robert Zamit, WH Partners. Now I know it's lunchtime, now, so it's a little bit of a challenge. But anyway, let's let's start um, immediately with our panel uh, this afternoon. Um, with me, I have quite a, a good selection of panelists because each one of them provide us with different insights on a regulatory and technical compliance. I have Raquel from an AML perspective. I have Antonio from a technical perspective. Andre from a regulatory perspective, and then we have Alex, who is from the operator side of you. So I was going to start with asking the whole panel. Maybe they can give me and I give me their feedback about what are the pros and cons of actually outsourcing compliance, regulatory and technical. Maybe Raquel. Shall I start? start? Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Hello. Well, pros and cons. There are various, obviously. Um, you'd need to look at your own setup as a gaming operator to understand whether it makes sense to retain control processes internally or whether to use external service providers who might be more of a, the, in their expertise to help you with uh, your obligations, obviously from my angle, in an AML perspective. I think that's one of the pros of outsourcing, seeking expertise. I can go on, but I'll, I'll leave it to the rest of the panel. So for, from a technical compliance perspective, I think it's, it's important to define the activities that happen before going live and the activity, the activity that you carry out after going live. So I think in the assessment of risk of which activity are, is, is, is a positive thing to outsource where expertise is very specific and it is, it is not something that you will require on an ongoing basis. All the activities that you carry out before going live as a supplier or as well as a B2C, it's, it, there is probably a lot more pros in terms of having sp specialist knowledge. Whilst for after going live where you need regular activities, it's absolutely important to retain some degree of control internal and only really tap into external knowledge when and if required. Um, equally, um, there is activities that are carried out during the live of an operation that also require expertise knowledge that are not um, carried out on a regular basis. So I think the, the pros of having an outsourced company is being able to tap to different type of talent at different time of the live of the operations. Andre? Yeah, I would go along with uh, what has already been said I think what one tends to forget when it comes to technical compliance is that it, it isn't straightforward. Um, we, we all need to keep in mind that you know gaming is a matter of subsidiarity, and therefore it differs from you know jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Those of you that are in compliance or deal with government relations would know it is quite complex, right? And then, obviously, um, you know, there's the cost of building a strong team, uh, availability of subject matter experts. Um, it's not easy to find, you know, people. Um, you know, then there's the whole issue of, you know, time to market. Um, you know, some operators, you know, they don't have a lot of time to scale up in terms of human resource capacity and those sort of things. They want to really go quickly to market. Um, but then again, you know, there's large companies who would much prefer to have control over their staff, the development team working directly with the compliance guys. Um, so there's definitely pros and cons, you know, to both. But I think it is um, no easy, no simple task to internalize it. It's probably easier to externalize it, um, depending on, you know, are you a large company or are you a small company? that want to go quickly to market. So, uh, Alex, is, is it just because of the size, but that one would prefer to outsource and not? I would say that it, it depends what, what, what we talk about. We talk about compliance, are we talking about technical compliance, uh, are we talking about uh, uh, 
uh, regulatory uh, administrative compliance and especially it depends if you are a B2C or a B2B. The closest you are to the player, uh, the, the more uh, uh, pressure you have because you manage player data, you manage source of funds, you manage everything which is related to identity, uh, uh, to responsible gaming, to email, etc., etc. So here the compliance becomes a lot. When you are on the other side of the spectrum and you are a, a, a software provider, basically what you have is technical compliance. It's very easy. Uh, 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 when we started our operation, we had a Curacao license, we went for MGA license, we went for UKGC license, we went for a Swedish license, and each step uh, became uh, more painful in terms of compliance. And, and, and at some point, I, I would say that 80% of our technical resources, we, uh, everything was developed in ours, we, we have our own platform, 80% uh, of the technical resources we're going for uh, developing for compliance. For the UKGC, we're coming uh, each month with something new. And I'm not even talking about the other part of compliance, where uh, uh, there's more rules and more things to do. So you can develop on your own. I, I, I love that. I love having my own tools. At some point, it just becomes impossible. You, ju you just cannot do it. And... Even if you manage to do it at some point, what you cannot do is maintain it. Uh, the cost of maintaining is just impossible. So I'd say that you need to have an internal team of compliance, that, that of course, where you have the control, where, 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 where you have the history of what the company does in terms of processes. But you need to rely on, on companies that are external companies, uh, sometimes for each market that are going to maintain you up to date uh, to what is happening in these markets. And on top of that, you need to find the right tools exactly. when you are a B2C that are going to uh, manage the call, like True Narrative, for example. Uh, 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 you need to use uh, all, all these tools because otherwise you're going to become a direct tech gateway where you as an operator have to integrate like games provider on one side, you have to integrate payment providers, and now you have to integrate on top of that uh, all the compliance regulatory check yourself. You just can't do that. It's impossible. Exactly. And this, this leads to my next actual question, which is, but outsourcing compliance is not just getting someone to submit paperwork for you with the regulator. It's much more than that, right, Antonio? So if, if, if I'm, I, I think what, what he said is actually spot on. I think that, and this is what links to what I said earlier, I think because the different type of outsourcing, depending what activity is being outsourced. So in a new market entry, you will have a lot of activities that are really related to preparing your platform to go live. Those resources needed to put that together require regulatory research to understand the requirements and then a technical team that are able to translate those requirements into a product. That initial effort, is it, which requires a number of resources to be done, needs to be supported by external companies because you're never going to need that amount of combined resources in-house in your, in your live operations. So relying on external companies... <clears throat> both on a regulatory and technical compliance, I would say, but obviously in a technical compliance more because there is development involved with what you're developing, uh, is key. Another key thing, I think, on what you just described is actually multi-jurisdictional multi, multi access. That's, that's exactly one point where having the visibility of the requirements across multiple jurisdictions and being able to develop a product that in, effectively in, incorporates all of these requirements, require very specific expertise that is not actually re really available in the market because there is, it really comes from two places, either from test labs, or pe but test labs cannot advise on how to implement a product because they need to be independent, or from, from large organizations like the GTEC, IGT, scientific games of this world, they're brought from the land-based culture of building requirements uh, in, in that format into the iGaming, which is not really available because there isn't many ex-IGT or ex -S, S, you know, scientific games available in the market, really. And if I can add on to what uh, Antonio is saying, I think a key factor to start off the plan of whether to outsource or not is the risk assessment of it. You need to understand within your structure how does it, this outsourcing fit in, 
what type of procedures, controls are you thinking of outsourcing and how will your risk change with that outsourcing? And regulators nowadays are very much focusing on how did you conduct your risk assessment? Which uh, external elements have you taken into consideration? Will you be placing reliance together with outsourcing? Will it be an intra-group outsourcing or external, totally external? Is it a core outsourcing function or not? So all this needs to be documented well within the company's risk assessment to start off with. I think if I can add to what you said, I agree entirely with you. I think the risk assessment, especially in our regulatory and compliance side, is a key thing. But I think in order for you to make that assessment, there needs to be knowledge to understand what the activities in each country are. And I think this is, this is why I think lawyers in jurisdiction specific support those activities together with specific areas consultants like technical compliance or ISMS or AML or, or other specialist areas. But the, that's the only way you're able to make that assessment, by understanding what you actually need to face. And this is why there is a complexity there. Um, but yeah, completely. I agree. You need to be armed with the right information, what software is available, who their competitors are, why go for that and not the other. I agree totally, yes. Uh, Andre, you, um, when we were discussing the topic at hand, you also mentioned different methods of, of the outsourcing side of things. So it's not just just having someone outside from your organization who just call for a consultancy. It's sometimes more than that. Yeah, it, it all depends. Are you, are you still on technical compliance? Or are you talking re regulatory compliance now? Well, it's uh, <laughs> because, <both. laughs> I, yeah, because I think um, uh, you, someone made the point that you can't just, as, an, as a supplier or an operator, distantiate yourself from your responsibility to show to the regulator that you are in control of your compliance. And so what we see happening around the world, and it's very prevalent in the United States, and it's, it's, that whole idea is growing in Europe and around the world, where the requirements that are being introduced becomes from the regulators very much focused on you should have a compliance committee. You should have a compliance plan. In fact, we want to see your compliance strategy, right? We want to see compliance reports. We want to see your, com your minutes of your meetings, right? We want to actually see that, um, and it, there's no expectation necessarily from the regulator that you now make business decisions, but when you associate with people outside of your business, the compliance people are supposed to look, is that association proper? You know, is it, are we associating with suitable people? The way in which we conduct ourselves in different markets around the world, are we doing it in compliance, you know, with those requirements of the other jurisdictions where we licensed or where we've applied for a license? And then generally, your day-to-day -day business practices you know, are those practices in compliance with the requirements? Uh, whether it's, you know, uh, anti-money laundering, responsible gaming, um, associations, you know, key individuals and all of those sort of things. And um, what's, what's happening more and more is that those committees are being populated by people who are independent of the company to bring some independent expertise in to the company. And so it is becoming almost a bit self-regulatory. You taking the responsibility to show us that you're a, a responsible operator or a supplier. So, so I think, Alex, this is the challenge. Because then you, you go into the consultants to bring you up to speed, then you, but you have to implement it. And that's where the biggest, I think, challenge comes from the, from the operator side. That it's not just finding out what you need to do, but actually being able to implement it in practice within the teams. Yes, and actually it's part of the process. Uh, when we work with the external companies, actually, when we talk about the fact, should we uh, 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 outsource compliance in some uh, cases, we must do it. When we go for audits, for example, 
whether they're technical audits, whether uh, audits of our processes, uh, when we have to give trainings uh, to our employees, it has to be certified by an external company, okay? So uh, uh, it's not about just getting uh, advices, uh, legal advices, compliance advices. Uh, it's about uh, having these companies coming within uh, the organization and implementing this and uh, implementing the procedures and, and, and then making sure that uh, we follow the procedures through audits that are uh, done uh, during during the year where it's uh, especially we had it on a technical side but also supports uh, especially with the UKGC uh, with responsible gaming uh, and uh, also on fraud but for, for more IML uh, uh, reasons uh, uh, obviously so uh, it, it it is a, a process of having basically external companies and not just one uh, coming within your organization and, and, I mean, sitting there with you. I mean, I think there's also something to be said that, I mean, some, I mean, regulatory authority have also an expectation for the license holder to retain control. And I think this is something that we've also seen um, in Maxima in, in the relation that you can't just simply drop and all your responsibility um, because there may be discussions that happen within the business. There may be a new investor that is coming in there comes from a particular background that requires a specific due diligence. So not having someone within the business that takes their responsibility as an external consultant that it doesn't sit within the organization but sits in, in their own offices, there is thing, things that can be missed. So as much as you can integrate, and you know we integrate fairly with all our clients that we work in almost as an in-house in team, but there is things that you, you can miss simply because you're not part of the operations in full. So I think it's important that the best way the uh, best way the outsourcing happens is by having still a compliance person within the business that is able to carry out those activities that are required as a license holder and then ask for support on specific activities, whether it's anti-money laundering, whether it's an assessment of responsible gambling, or whether running, you know, the review of your fraud procedures, or whether is carrying out a review of your ISMS policies, you know, of or in the Netherlands, for example, now with the QMS, which is a new requirement that wasn't, wasn't there before. Very little, very little knowledge is out there. You know, when, when you need to talk about assessing in, in accordance with ISO 9001, a series of processes which actually are gambling operations, there isn't that much knowledge. So you need to rely on external sources. But equally, it's important the license holder, because in the eyes of the regulators, have this responsibility. Um, you know, retain some control of this, of, of this, of, of compliance effectively. And I think this would then lead to ensuring the right contracts are in place with whoever you choose, the right service provider has been chosen, you're happy with, to take them on board, you'd need to see what kind of contractual language you're going to have in place. This is a legal requirement for all B2C uh, licensees to have in place the contract in place which will go into what services are being outsourced exactly, which will go into termination clauses. So then you can think of a plan B if that core outsource service fails for some reason. Um, maybe uh, clauses for liability if something should go wrong. Um, uh, who is responsible for what? The sharing of data, who is responsible, who is controller, who is processor because then all the GDPR aspects come into play as well. So usually suppliers might come with their own standard contract for you to sign and you're happy to proceed. But it is important that these are reviewed from your perspective as well. I think, yes, absolutely. I think one key thing, and this is generally, whichever suppliers you're engaging, it is absolutely clear in the contracts to really define the statement of work and the areas that are being covered and how this engagement takes place. I mean, one key thing that you must expect when outsourcing any type of service is to really have an, an engagement call, which is at the beginning of the relationship, to really define the engagement between your internal team and external team. Because, it, for example, on the technical compliance side, even if you're not, if you don't have a technical compliance person in-house, the external technical compliance consultant is likely to interact with your developers, for example, or with your product owners. So it's absolutely important that those relationships are established and clear from the get-go so that 
the, the process could be optimized and streamlined and making sure that nothing gets missed. I, I think from the panel today, I, we, we can summarize that it's, it's more of a process. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution for sure. Each, each operator needs to identify what needs to be outsourced depending on the risks and then make sure that there is mechanisms and policies in place to be actually make, get at the advantage required from the outsource being actually provided. So we have just a few minutes left. So just brief comment each as a concluded remark. Maybe we can start with Andre. No, I think in, in summary, it's important to emphasize that responsibility for making sure that you comply whether you're a B2B or a B2C, is your responsibility. There's certain things that you can contract out, but you retain the responsibility in the end for it. And there's a lot of things that happen in companies, financial transactions, suitability of associates, key individuals, and so you can continue. And financial transactions that you don't really want to get external people involved in, that is a matter for the CEO who takes commercial decisions we have to battle it out with a compliance officer. Um, but no doubt, on the technical side, training, those sort of things, easy to, to, to contract those things out. Alex? Uh, one main question, before even thinking about um, outside, what, what, what you want to source or, or what you want to do is not in house is really bring compliance into the hearts of these departments uh, because otherwise whether you got the, the best advices uh, 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 from outside if you didn't bring the, the process within the company especially I'll, I'll tell you clearly with marketing uh, marketing wants to do business marketing doesn't want to talk with compliance if you didn't enforce that on a daily basis it's not going to happen. And you're going to see affiliates doing things they should not do for which you're going to be held responsible. You're going to have your marketing doing some very aggressive campaigns and uh, it, 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 it won't work. And when I say it has to be brought within each department, I even talk especially, and we talk about technical compliance, within the products. It has to be compliance by design within the product. And that's where you, 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 you can finally uh, do it, because there, there's no work around. And so, I mean, the, the, the advice in terms of outsourcing is that the key thing is integration between the, the team outsourced and your internal team. And, and that's why the definition of that process is the key of success for outsourcing. Raquel? I think we've said a lot. Uh, which is all very useful. I think if I had to summarize it and be a bit succinct, I would say to plan it out well, it's not something that you can just decide on over two emails, a click of a button, and you're outsourcing um, some, some of your functions or controls. So it needs to be planned out well. If needs be, discussed with the regulator as well to see if this is something that can be entertained. And then make sure all the rest of the processes, risk assessment, controls, testing, I think someone mentioned testing, contracts in place, then are in place. All right, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for joining us. Uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>